Greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, the show where I try to explain to you all the various words and terms used to describe video games in the video games industry. And today's term is that of resolution. According to a general definition, the display resolution or display modes of a digital television, computer, monitor, or display device is the number of distinct pixels in each dimension that can be displayed. So when we say something like 1080p, you're referring to 1920 by 1080 progressive. It's the number of pixels and the way in which those pixels are moved, if you will. It's a simple concept to understand. 1920 multiplied by 1080. That describes an area, one in which you will find 2,073,600 pixels. It is very important to understand that that is what the resolution truly means. It's the number of those pixels. So that when people say that 4K is 4 times 1080p, they are correct. Now, I have to say this because I've written articles about this and people have always pointed out that 4K isn't 4 times 1080p, it's twice 1080p. After all, it is only 3840 times 260, which is over 8 million pixels for time 1080p. I know some of you understand this, but I need to be sure that everybody understands this so that we can move to the next step. What's the P there in 1080p? Or we may see 1080i. That is interlaced or progressive. Interlaced was a means to an end. Back in the day, displays, hardware in general was kind of not really capable of delivering full fluid motion at a certain resolution. So instead of displaying the entire image moving at once, which is what progressive does, it means that every frame is an entirely new image, interlaced only moved half the image with each frame. The image would be split up into many many horizontal lines, each of them grouped into two fields. When one field was showing the next frame, the other one would still be displaying the previous frame. You technically have half the frame rate and technically have the resolution, but if you squinted, it sort of looked like it was moving all at once and in a good enough resolution. With lower fidelity display technology, it wasn't that much of an issue, but but as time evolved, we got better and better technology and you can kind of start seeing the interlacing quite easily on anything that has, especially on low resolution images from let's say older video games that had interlaced intros or interlaced cinematics because they occupied less space, there was less data in there, there was half the frame rate, technically half the resolution, sort of, I mean, it, well there's a full resolution just not all of it at once, which makes it also easier on the hardware generating the image, which is why older consoles used to have interlaced video, it was easier to output, it wasn't as demanding, and it would allow a game to run smoother, or at least feel more responsive. But as hardware evolved, progressive scan became a lot easier to use. Sort of. Which leads to the popular definition, and currently that is 4K or nothing. Just a couple of years ago, everybody was trying to reach 1080p and well, some systems could not really do it at a proper frame rate. But now with the um, small upgrade to the console technology that happened a couple of years ago, we are now at 4K because everybody likes 4K. 4K is a good number, it's a big number. It's also a number that has problems. Uh, yeah, 4K looks amazing. 4K, 4 times 1080p, resolution at that scale looks superb, it looks crisp. It's a resolution high enough so that anti-aliasing really isn't an issue. You don't kind of need it anymore because the image is so high resolution that the jagged edges are not visible. The pixels that represent those edges are such a smaller part of the screen now out of those 8 million pixels that unless you have your nose up all the way to the screen, you're not gonna notice them as much as you would in a lower resolution video game. But 4K does have a few problems, namely 4K requires hardware to run that well, some high-end PCs can 
and games that are not optimized as complete crap, and some console games can also run natively at 4K resolution. Some, usually ones that don't require that much processing power, don't really look a lot great, or are more limited in terms of what they actually represent. For example, racing games, they are quite easy to run at high resolutions because they don't really need to render the scenery in a lot of detail on account of you driving very fast past it, whereas the car, no matter how uh, complicated it may be, it will not require as many resources to render as human characters or a big sprawling city that you can explore of your own free will, and it's just a easier, more directed visual experience that you can use a lot of shortcuts to improve performance on. But again, not all games can run at 4K, at least not at a playable frame rate, which as we've established, begins at 30, but really, you're gonna need to go higher if you want proper control, depending on the pace of the game you're playing. 30 frames is fine for civilization, it's fine for slower games, not that great for an action game. But to maintain that frame rate, what you actually get on consoles is usually a dynamic resolution, meaning that the resolution is not 4K. Heck, before the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 Pro, they could not do 1080p properly. So the resolution would dynamically scale down. You would lose some detail in the edges, pixels will be stretched out, and it was done fine enough and quick enough that you may not have noticed it too much, depending on how far away you were standing from the screen and it was necessary because otherwise the game would not run as well and that would have been noticeable no matter how far away you were from the screen which leads us to the um, marketing definition that would be 720p is just as good as 1080p guys and also this 20 frames a second that bad when the last generation of consoles i mean the half the current one i mean was released basically no games ran at 1080p at 60 frames a second in the least not on the Xbox because uh, there were issues with it. The PlayStation 4 didn't fare better in a lot of situations either. It was actually worse than that. They couldn't run at 1080p at 30 frames a second. So they used different tricks. For example, uh, Quantum Break ran at 720p. It was upscaled so that it would look like it was running at 1080p, but it wasn't. It was a very nice upscaling with a filter that try to even out the edges, but it was still noticeably not as good as 720p, especially when you took into account all the effects it would be running at a low resolution. And when in motion, you could absolutely see it just not looking that great. And when resolution was improved, you got really bad frame rates. So the company started to do their own things, like saying, oh, we're running at 900p, which is just as good as 1080p. It's close to it, but it's not as good as it. Or the classic, oh, 30 frames a second is the greatest possible thing ever, it's more cinematic, 60 frames a second actually is a bad thing. And they got a bunch of people to parrot what they were saying, that it reduces the games. I have no clue what it would reduce. And then you got into resolutions which are a bit weird, like 1120 by 800, which is the width of 1080p, but not the height of 1080p. And they say, oh, that's so it'll look more cinematic. No, that's because it wouldn't run at 30 frames a second in full 1080p. The hardware was just not capable. No matter how limited, no matter how directed, no matter how the game tried to use the hardware as best as possible to not waste resources. It was just not there. But somehow they could run it at 4x MSAA instead of 1080p and maybe 2x MSAA. I think the hardware was capable of handling anti-aliasing better than resolution, maybe, than actually displaying the full image. And of course, the marketing department ran away with it and said, oh, uh, 1080p is bad. This is more cinematic. 30 frames a second are the best. More is horrible. Which is, of course, what the propaganda departments always do. So closes another edition of the Gaming Codex. Come back next time when we will talk about a brand new subject. Goodbye.